Praise the Lord today, saints. Hallelujah to the Most High King. Hallelujah to our God and Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Father, I thank you for this word today. It's a very necessary word, Lord, for many today, Lord, who are entrapped by the enemy in religion. And Father, I pray today that you will use this word to open the eyes, Lord, and give the revelation needed for those whom you have chosen, O God, that they would come out of Babylon, come out of the behemoth that the Roman Catholic Church is, Lord. Come out of that Leviathan, O God. I pray, Father, that your spirit would move upon many today, this day, when this video is viewed, Lord, when this message is listened to, in the spirit of meekness and contriteness before you, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you would fill those that come out with your spirit. Fill them, O oh God, to overflowing in Jesus' name. And crush every demonic work that would try to hinder people from receiving this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, it's vitally important to understand today that there are there's the true Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and there is the false Trinity of politics, economics, and religion. Okay, and really, religion should go first because it is such a controlling mechanism in this earth. Religion is. And the biggest religious system on the face of this earth today is the Roman Catholic Church. There's no doubt about it. Now, I was born and raised as a Roman Catholic in a Catholic parish in Houston, Texas. And I'm going to tell you right now that it is a behemoth, okay? I have much experience in the Catholic Church, working in the Catholic Church, teaching Sunday schools and baptism classes and serving at the altar even as an adult okay uh, being admitted into the seminary to become a Catholic priest which I never showed up praise the Lord God kept me from it hallelujah but from a very young age I can remember back when I was about seven years old six seven years old first second grade when I, be, when I learned how to read, I, I would get that big Bible my mom and dad had and read the red letters. Oh, hallelujah. I love the red letters. They were so pretty. And I believed. I was a believer from a young age. I believed God was real. But I had no concept or understanding of sin and the fall and all these doctrines that are taught in the Bible, okay, and justification by faith or anything like that. I had no understanding of it none at all and like other good Catholics I thought you had to go to mass every Sunday and you know a good Catholic goes to, to mass every Sunday they don't call it going to church they call it going to mass okay and and being living across the street from the the church itself would even go to daily mass every day go to mass and thinking that that was pleasing to God Okay, thinking that I was doing something, doing some work to make God happy and be pleased with me, and I was going to get favor with God. Now, granted, God protected me my whole life, even in the time I spent in the Roman Catholic Church. He protected me from evil. He protected me from being, and when I say He protected me from evil, what I mean is He protected me from being killed by the devil. Okay. Because God would see me wanting to go do evil, all right, and and He let me go. I go do evil, and then go to the priest and bow down and kneel down before the priest, kneel down before the priest, before the the man, the Father they call him. Kneel down before Him, an ordinary man, a sinner. And confess my sins. And then he would wave his hand over me and bless me and tell me to say three Hail Marys or, you know, 
10 hour fathers or pray the rosary or do something in order to show God I, I mean it I'm sorry and then the next week same sins again same sins again this is repetitive throughout the life the Roman Catholic Church is is, is such a Babylonian spirit of control you just you don't even have any concept if you're in it you don't have that concept of it when I got I got saved when I was 18 but I didn't get saved in the Roman Catholic Church okay I mean when I was seven years old I wanted the Lord in my life I wanted Jesus because if the Catholics believed that Jesus was in that host and you made your first communion when you're seven years old but I was so rebellious as a seven-year-old that I didn't stay in Sunday school and I didn't go with the rest of the crowd and the rest of the group to make my first communion in a traditional way so I, I just got in line one day because I wanted Jesus as a little seven-year-old I that's what I thought he was but I was deceived but still the Lord in heaven saw my heart see so at 18 I was pressed upon my mother got the baptism of the Holy Ghost in 1978 and she began to attend Lakewood Church in Houston where John Osteen not Joel John Osteen was pastor who was a Baptist preacher who got the release of the Holy Ghost and started his own fellowship and it grew and grew and grew and uh, he did you know there were many saw many healings people being touched lives changed through that ministry it's not the same it wasn't the same ministry that you see today with Lakewood Church okay so this was back in the 70s anyway my mother she uh, and my little sister, they were really heavy duty into the Holy Spirit and everything. And, and at this time, I was almost 18 years old. They were pressing me, pressing me. And I was just, I would treat them like a dog, you know. And uh, because I was rebellious. But at 18, when I was 18, my sister died in a car crash, my older sister. And that got me to thinking about, you know serious things and, and about God and everything and, and so I was invited to go to uh, a rally if you will they have these stadium rallies in in Houston at this time First Baptist Church of Houston John uh, John Bassania was preaching it was on a Wednesday and at that meeting I got saved I, I accepted the Lord at 18 but I didn't leave the Catholic Church this is the point it's a behemoth I'm telling you it, it it's got tentacles and it's like an octopus it's like a leviathan and it's got these things in people's souls and it holds them but I was meeting people at Lakewood Church because we used to go to Lakewood Church on a Wednesday night and Sunday night and we'd stay in the Catholic Church and work there and I mean it was just a and this is what they want today they want all this ecumenicalism but anyway I remember this person, this one person in the, in the Lakewood Church would warn me about the Roman Catholics, warning me. And I, I said, no, we made all those things holy. We made all that, that stuff's holy now, you know. These these uh, Ishtar, Easter, and Christ Mass, Christmas, and all these things, the Catholic Church made them holy, you know. And so that's what I believed. So when I, I subsequently backslid from 1985, 86, until 1994 so when I came back to the Lord in 1994 the first place I went because of these tentacles was to the Roman Catholic Church and I met this old priest and he was just crying and, and he was so excited I was returning to mama and he heard my confession and everything and, and then I met my wife and I started going to daily mass and all this stuff and that thing was I mean it's got these tentacles I'm telling you and the only thing that can break it is the truth the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ and so when I met my dear wife in 1995 and we were married in 95 and then in 1996 we moved into a house uh, we were living in a mobile home we lived in we moved into a house in Oklahoma City and she could see that I was you know being pulled this way and she was raised Nazarene so she knew it was wrong uh, but then the Lord spoke to her and told her go ahead and just go on into the Catholic Church because then I'm gonna bring John out I'm gonna bring him out and so she was obedient to the Lord and she went in and did all the little forms and everything and you know all the little teaching you have to go through and 
and her family was like, well, this is like crazy, you know, Sharon's doing this, and so anyway, right after that, I had ordered this book called Too Long in the Sun by Richard Reeves, and it's a powerful book. If you're a Roman Catholic watching this today, you need to order that book. It's called Too Long in the Sun by Richard Reeves, and you can get that book on the internet. You can find it, and when I started reading it, it opened my eyes because it goes through the whole history of the mother and child and the Baal worship and all these things. And he points out very clearly. And when I read that book, the scales just fell off my eyes. And we never went back to the Catholic Church. But that Babylon spirit of religion is so strong. What did we do? We had to go find another church and go find. We started every Sunday we would dress up and get cleaned up and we get in the car and we drive around trying to find a fellowship and all the time the Lord's saying I don't want you in any of these places I want you in my lap I want you in my attendance okay and I say okay Lord so finally we just gave up the search and he said now I want you to go buy you each a good King James Bible at the at the time I was reading the uh, American Standard Version Catholic Bible that I had for many years I bought in the early 80s and Sharon was reading the NIV so we went to the uh, Mardells and got us each a good King James Bible. And we began to read and God began to show us mighty things. Hallelujah. And one thing he showed me, because see, I know there's many people in the Catholic Church who do, well, they believe they're hearing from God. I mean, but see, that's one thing about it. When you're in the Catholic Church and you're hearing from God, one thing God's telling you is to come out of that church come out of there but you're afraid to come out of there because what's mama going to think what's daddy going to think what, what what's my co-workers going to think what's the men's club going to think i mean they had a men's club at the church i grew up in and on tuesday nights they meet at the men monday or tuesday night was the men's club and they'd talk for 10 minutes and hit the little gavel and then they would sit around the table and play poker for money and drink beer and liquor until about 12 o'clock every single week now that's not God that's not of the Lord to do that men of God true men of God come together and pray and seek the Father's face hallelujah that's just one thing I could tell you and I'll tell you one more little quick one. My brother was an altar boy. This is when I was young. And he was about 14 or 15, I guess. And it's Saturday evening, 6 o'clock mass. And he's an altar boy. And it's 6 o'clock. And everybody's in the church. And there's no priest. And there's no priest. So he goes over to the rectory, goes through the private entrance, goes down into the rec room where they had this big rec room with big fancy TV and everything, furniture, and all the priests are sitting in there, about 15 or 20 priests sitting in there, drunker than a skunk, all of them, every one of them, and, and they say, what are you doing in here? He says, "It's we need a priest to say Mass, and so the priests started fighting to see who's going to go say Mass. Now this is a true story. And, and there's many more to tell. But the point of this video is to show you that God says you do not bow down to a man. You bow down to the Lord Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, the holy man, hallelujah, the holy child, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's all you bow down to. The scripture teaches us we are to submit one to another side by side in the body of Christ. And the true body of Christ does this. You don't bow down to no priest. And if, when you're hearing this today, if you keep going and bowing down to a priest after you hear this, you are in gross error. You are in gross sin before the Almighty God. And God says to stop it. God says to repent and come out of that whore, which is Rome, which is the Roman Catholic Church. Now, I'm going to show you. The Catholic Church teaches Peter was the first pope. The first pope. Many of you have seen the pictures with Pope John Paul the first okay and then you see the pictures 
of Pope Benedict. You see the pictures of Pope John the Twenty Third, Pope Pius. You see the pictures of Pope Francis. Oh, Pope Francis. I'm going to share this with you. They, they had this video on the internet about this ecumenical movement thing that's going on. And Kenneth Copeland had this big service at his church there in Fort Worth. And they had this, this guy come over from England. The Anglican bishop came over from England and was telling all the people they were all Catholics. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's good. We're going to go back to the, to the mama whore. Okay, because we're all a bunch of little whores. We're going to go back to mama whore. And so they had a video. The Pope Francis made a video to the people. And he starts out the video speaking in English, like this broken English, like he's trying to fool people that he, he really can't speak English. Okay, give me a break. All right. And so then he starts talking Italian. And I'm sitting there watching, and he's got this silly grin on his face. This, and I can feel... This behemoth spirit, still to this day, when I'm around it, you can feel that thing, and it comes in, and it's trying to grab a hold and pull you back in to its mouth so it can devour you. And I was, and, Sh and Sharon's like, "Turn that off." I'm like, "Yeah, I know. Look, you can you feel that?" And she said, "Yeah, turn it off. Turn it off." <laughs> so I turned it off. And the Lord showed me, and I think that's when he showed me when I heard that to begin to speak about this because it's important. And so there will probably be future messages in addition to this one. But he says, don't bow down to a man. And Peter's the first pope, they say, in the Catholic. That's what they teach. St. Peter, the first pope. Okay. They say that the altar there in, uh, in, in the Vatican is... You know, Peter's bones are in there or something, you know. It's like, it's crazy. And there's so much we're going to talk about, about this subject. But right here in the book of Acts, in the Bible, the Holy Scripture, okay, that the Roman Catholic Church killed people because they were reading their Bible and propagating, propagating the Bible in their own language, okay. They wanted it kept in Latin because only the priests could interpret it. Oh, they still teach that today. And you know what? The Baptist and the Assemblies of God and all of them are doing the same thing. Only the pastor really knows what the Bible means. No, no. God's not capable of giving you a revelation if you read the Bible. Oh, but see, that's a lie. Listen to what the Bible says. In Acts chapter 10, verse 17. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision, which he had should mean, which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate, and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause whereof ye are come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God, and of the good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house, and to hear words of thee. Then called he, in, he them in, and lodged them. And on the morrow Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea. And Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. And as Peter was coming in, as Peter was walking in, because the Holy Ghost said, Go, the Holy Ghost said, Go do it, Peter. And Peter was obedient to the Lord. He walked into a Gentile's house, which he wasn't supposed to do as a Jew. But Peter knew God is saying to do this and I'm going to go be obedient. And some of you out there listening to this today, you're getting a witness in your spirit that God is telling you to come out of the Roman Catholic Church. Be obedient like Peter was, okay? Now listen. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him 
and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. And that's what you see today with all these popes and all the bishops. The bishops get it too, and so do the priests. They get the worship from the people. Okay? People hang on every word of a man, a fallen man, a man that needs salvation. Hallelujah. There's many Catholic priests who've received true salvation who've come. What have they done when they've got the true salvation? They leave the Catholic Church. Okay? You can find them all over the internet. Just type in ex-Roman Catholic priest, you know, and you'll find many today who are preaching the truth of the gospel. They've left the Roman Catholic whore church. Okay? And I'm not saying all of them that have left are, are good, but I'm saying there's many that have. Because that's what happens. You get out of the whore. God says in the word six times in six different places. He says it in Isaiah. He says it in Jeremiah. He says it in uh, 2 Corinthians. And he says it in Revelations. Come out of her, my people. Come out of Babylon. He fell down at his feet and worshipped him. And you see these pictures. People bowing down to the Pope. Kissing his hand, kissing his shoe, worshiping the Pope who says he is the vicar of Christ, who says he is actually Christ. And he's the devil. He's working for the devil. It's Antichrist. He's just a man. So Cornelius falls down. Now, Peter's the quote, this according to the Catholics, the first Pope. But here's what he did. But Peter took him up saying, stand up. I myself also am a man. See, Peter told him, stand up, get up, Cornelius, get up. I'm just like you. I'm a man. I need Jesus just as much as you do. Oh, hallelujah. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come into one, come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying as soon as I was sent for. I asked therefore for what intent ye have sent for me. And Cornelius said, he told him the story, okay. So Peter began to preach to Cornelius. And as he, as he was preaching, the Holy Ghost fell on them all. And Peter said, what's to stop these men from being baptized? Seeing they received the Holy Ghost just like we did. Hallelujah. So he stayed there a few days ministry. Later in his life, Peter wrote here. I'm going to turn over here. In 1 Peter, read a little bit out of here. Hallelujah. Later in his life, Peter's writing now. He says here in chapter 1, I'm going to give the introduction here. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers... He's not just writing to uh, these, uh, quote, leaders of the church. He's writing to everybody in the body of Christ. Strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, all over the world. I mean, they're the people of God. Peter's writing them. He says he calls them elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit, capital S, not sanctification of the church, of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, graced unto you, and peace be multiplied. Verse 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Not by bowing down to the Pope. Not by bowing down to your priest, kneeling down before me, confessing your sins. You need to go to Jesus and confess your sins. Okay? And if you've sinned against someone, you go to them and tell them. You say you're sorry. You ask them to forgive you. Okay? Then you go to the Lord and ask His forgiveness and He washes away your sin. Hallelujah. You believe the truth of the gospel. To an inheritance. This is what we're begotten unto. This is what we're born again unto. To an inheritance incorruptible. 
and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Oh, hallelujah. See, it's a done deal. Oh, praise God. Who are kept by the power of God through the faith, through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Now, I'm going to go over to chapter 2. Chapter 2 here, it says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, oh, hallelujah, that ye may grow thereby the word, the word, the holy word of God, the scriptures, the word, this desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so be that ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. And then Peter says this. This is Peter the Apostle, whom the Catholics say was the first Pope. He says, Ye also, talking to you today, whoever's listening to this, he says, if you're born anew and filled with the Holy Ghost, you got to be born anew from heaven. You can't just go get baptized as a baby, as a Roman Catholic, or as a Lutheran, or as an Anglican, okay, or as a Methodist, or as a Presbyterian, or as Assemblies of God. You, you can't do that. That don't work. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house. you got to be born anew from heaven. And holy priesthood. And holy priesthood. Okay? Peter calls the people of God. He says we are a holy priesthood. But the Catholics got it all twisted around. It's an antichrist spirit. They raise up one man and say, He's the holy man. He's the priest. Oh, look how look how holy he is, man. He devoted his whole life to God. Look at him. You know? And, and then it, it frees the people up to go live like hell. Live like the devil, live like the world, commit all sorts of atrocities and abominations against God, and then they, all they got to do is go say that man's holy and bow down, and then he forgives. He washes away their little sins. He says, "Oh, you are forgiven," and he, he blesses them, he slaps them, or whatever. And then he tells them, "Pray a little hell Mary, and you're okay." And they go away feeling oh, washed. They go away feeling in their soul that they they're okay with God. But I know many of you today, you, you know, you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, there is corruption. There is evil and wickedness. You can't see it on the outward all the time, but it's there. It's a control. It's a witchcraft. And it's got people controlled. God wants to free you today. God wants to break every chain of the devil off your life today from the Roman Catholic Church. God wants to free you. Hallelujah. Let him. He says, Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices. Hallelujah. Acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. That's what a priest does. See? He offers sacrifice. See? You sacrifice. What do you sacrifice, John? Well, in the Roman Catholic Church, they put this little piece of bread and they say that's Jesus. They say they're killing Jesus again. They say he's he's being actually crucified again. They have an altar they do this on. And inside that altar, there's a bones of a person inside that altar that they're doing this on. It's such an abomination to God. To the true and living God, what they're doing. My wife knew it right off the bat. She could see, boy, oh man. God, God let her, I guess God told her to do it, not only to bring me out, but to show her the... The total depravity of man. I mean, in religion. And that's the beginning of it. When they started that Roman Catholic Church. But look at this. A priest offers worship to God. Worship. Adoration. And all God's people are part of the royal priesthood of God. John wrote in Revelation chapter 7 that we are king. He has made us. Jesus has made us kings and priests unto our God. Hallelujah. To worship before the Lord, coming together side by side in the body of Christ, interceding one for another, hallelujah, praying for one another unto the Lord, lifting each other up, 
like Aaron and her lifted up Moses' arms. We do that for one another in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Wherefore also it is verse 6 of chapter 2 of 1 Peter. It is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in sign a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. So you got to believe on the Lord Jesus, not the Pope, not your priest, not your bishop, not your archbishop, not your cardinal. Okay? Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense. See, the true and living God, the true gospel, the Bible-believing, true believers today are an offense to the Roman Catholic Church. And we will not bow down to that devil. Okay? Hallelujah. Jesus has made the head of the corner. The same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they are they were appointed. But ye, Peter's talking to us now, those who are filled with the Spirit, those who are born anew, are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. There's your king and there's your priest. A royal priesthood. God's people. Oh, hallelujah. And you don't got to go to the seminary to get it. You got to come to Jesus. You got to bow down to the Lord Jesus. You got to repent of your sins and believe the gospel. You got to say, Lord, fill me. I believe. Hallelujah. But ye are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, God's calling many of you today out of darkness into his marvelous light. Are you going to come? Are you going to come to the Lord? On his terms, not what the Roman Catholic Church teaches you, but what Jesus Christ teaches you. By his spirit, through the word of God, through the Holy Scripture. Get you a good King James Bible and begin to read it. Let the Lord speak to you. Read the Gospel of John. Read uh, the epistles, the letters of Peter and John. 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1, 2, and 3 John. Read the book of Jude. Start out there and let the Lord speak to you. Then read Paul's letters. And no, read Isaiah, read, read the Bible. In the King James Version, let the Lord speak to you, believe it. Father, I pray that you would touch many today, Lord, that hear this, that you would bring them out of that devil, Lord, that, that antichrist church, Lord, that antichrist, wicked, vile system of the Roman Catholicism, Lord. Bring them out, O oh God, bring them out. Open hearts to receive this word today, Lord. For your name to be glorified, O oh Jesus. Your name, Lord Jesus, for you are the King of glory. Hallelujah. And you're coming, Lord. Hallelujah. Shatter the darkness, O oh God. Pierce the darkness today with your awesome light. The light of your truth. The light of your word in your precious blood. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.